some equations in trig require factorizing and you'll be able to recognize them because they they look like you can't do anything with them and then you should start thinking about all the factorizing you've been doing probably since grade nine so what is factorizing again um you might have to take out a highest common factor you may have a difference of two squares okay so all of this comes into trig now okay so either you're breathing a sigh of relief because you love factorizing or you are um let's rephrase you're being grateful that you get an opportunity to learn factorizing again and you can also get trinomials You can get grouping. Okay, so think through all the different systems you've used and be ready to apply them here. Okay, so you'll see in my first example what I mean by it feels like there's nothing you can do. Okay, first of all, there's a cos squared. Okay, and that now equals cos beta. And yeah, you maybe are thinking about dividing by cos beta. That will limit your answers. Okay, so be careful. Just like with squaring and factorizing your quadratic equations, you can't just divide through by one of them because it eliminates one of your answers. So I think it's good to just say to yourself, well, that has a square in it. That be quadratic. Okay, so it's quadratic, therefore... I'm going to need to do some factorizing and I should get out, wait for it, four answers because a normal trig equation gives you two. When you've got a square thing in it, it will give you two of those two, which then makes it four. So yeah, these get quite big. Okay, let me move to the left hand side so that I can factorize because that's what we always did with quadratics. Minus cos b equals zero. Okay. What am I going to do? Highest common factor? Is it a dot? Some people will think that's a dot, but that's not a square. So no, can't be. Difference of two squares is only one. Plus there's an awkward little two there, which is not a perfect square. It is definitely not a trinomial because there'd be three terms. And it's not grouping because there'd be four. Okay, so let's take out the thing that you thought maybe you thought about dividing by. If I take out a cos b, I'm left with two cos beta. Sorry, it's a beta, not a b. Taking out a 2 cos beta there, minus 1. Okay. Now, just be logical according to the kind of factorizing you've done before. If that looked different, I just want to prove to you that you have done this kind of thing, but not with these terms yet. Let's say you had x and 2x minus 1 equals 0. What would you do with that? You would realize that x is 0 or 2x minus 1 is 0. And all I've done is I've replaced the x with a cos beta. Okay, so this is where we're going to get the four answers from because that will be 0 or that will be 0 and each of those will yield two answers. Okay, so now we split and we split again when we go to quads. So either cos beta equals zero. What's nice is they tend to be like really straightforward. Okay, or two cos beta minus one equals zero. Let's do one at a time here. So I'm going to shift cos the zero. You might even just know that from special angles. By the way, we treat zero as positive. This is probably the first time you've come across it. Maybe not. Okay, so that means it's going to be in quad one and four. Okay, so when I shift it, I get 90 degrees. Okay, so in quad one, in quad one I have beta equals 90 degrees plus k360 because it was a cos and in quad 4 I have beta equals 360 that's a 360 minus quadrat so it's going to go through 360 minus 90 
plus K360, which is just 270, plus K360. So there's my one, two answers, and now I need to go to the other one and deal with this guy. So this is going to give me two as well. Okay, so I'm going to have two cos beta, moving the one across, because I want to isolate the, the trig ratio. So now I'm going to have cos beta equals dividing by two a half. And then at that point I can shift, but it is positive. So yet again, you'll see the actual solving of these ones where you've had to factorize. Like this part's really straightforward compared to, for example, a name changer. Okay, so it's positive, so it's got one and four again. First I need to get my angle. So I'm going to shift cos the half and I'm going to get beta is 60 degrees and that's my reference angle. Okay, so that one was my RA. And this one's my RA. Right, now I'll go into the quads. So quad one. Quad one, I'm going to have just exactly that. Beta is 60 degrees plus K360. And then in quad two, it's, sorry, quad four, it's the 360 minus. So in quad four, I'm going to have 360 minus the 60 plus K360, so that's going to give me 300 degrees plus K360. And here I had in quad 1 that answer and in quad 4 that answer, so 1, 2, 3, 4 in each. Um, sometimes they repeat and if they do, you can then just summarize it by putting just the one down that got repeated and not having four different ones. Well, my second example with factorizing, again, I've got this square and this other one. Okay, so I've got a, a certain trig ratio and I've got the same trig ratio squared. Right, so I want to tell you that this is a trinomial. But I think one way to test, and you can always undo this if you need to, is to move things to the left. So... I'm going to have 2 sine squared theta minus sine theta minus 1 equals 0. Maybe now you can see it's a trinomial. So there's three things. One of them got squared. And one of them didn't. So what you can do here is use a K method. You don't have to if you can see it straight away. But it can be helpful. I can say, all right, let... Let's sine theta equal k. Then this thing becomes 2 k squared, right? Minus k minus 1. And that's relatively easy to factorize. Okay, so normally the factorizing is not the issue with these questions. It's knowing that you need to do that. Okay, so that'll go nicely into... 2k and 1 and k and negative 1. All right. Okay, so once I've got that, I can sub back. I basically use a substitution method. Right, as I said, you don't have to do that, but it may help you. It's certainly really useful with um, exponents, so maybe using the same method over and over again is a good idea. Okay, so now I'm going to sub back and I'm going to say 2. What was k again? k was sine theta, so I'm going to say 2 instead of k, it could be sine theta plus 1, and sine theta minus 1. And now what you've got is bracket times bracket is 0, so that must be 0, or that must be 0. So that's going to give two answers, and that one's going to give two answers, using the zero factor law. Okay, so 2 sine theta plus 1 equals 0. Or sine theta minus 1 equals 0. And again, you're going to see that the next step's like relatively straightforward. There's just a lot going on. There's a lot to do to just get your head around. But it's not, actual maths is not particularly difficult. Okay, so here I'm going to isolate the, just do the first one on the left here. I'm going to isolate the trig ratio. Uh, moving the negative, moving the 1 across to get negative 1. 
and then I'm going to have sine theta is negative a half. Okay, and at that point, I know my quads. Remember, that's all that gives me. It gives me sine is negative, so it's those two. And then I'm going to shift sine, the half, not the negative a half, but the positive half. And I'm going to get out an answer that's going to be my reference angle. Okay, so reference angle for a half will be 30 degrees. And from there, I'll go into my quads. Okay, I'm just going to finish this one and then go into the quads from there for both of them. All right, so here I'm going to have sine theta equals 1. And that's all very well. I'm going to shift the 1. 1 is positive, so that takes me into quad 1 and 2. And then I'm going to have a reference angle. So shift sine the 1, and I get 90 degrees. And that is my reference angle. Okay, so I'm doing them parallel to each other. You can finish off the one and then finish off the other. It really just depends on what your brain enjoys doing. So I know this is quad three and four. So at this point, I split into quads. Okay, quad three is going to be the 180 plus. So I'm going to say theta is 180 degrees plus 30 degrees plus K360 because it was a sine question. Um, and that's going to give me is... 210 plus K360. Okay, my first answer. And then the next one will be in quad 4. Quad 4 is a 360 minus. I'm going to go 360 minus my reference angle, which is the 30 plus K360. And that will give me 330. plus K360 as my second answer. Okay, moving across to get my third and fourth answer. These guys will go in quad one, one and two. So in quad one, I'm going to have theta is 90 plus K360. I really should have said at some point K is an element of integers. Okay, I've never seen that being given a mark, but you do have to do it. So that's that, and then in quad 2 is the 180 minus, this is going to be interesting, 180 minus 90 plus K360. Okay, now what are you thinking is going to happen there? It's going to be the same, isn't it? I'm going to have 90 plus K360. Right, these guys are duplicates. That definitely happens. So when you put your final solution down, you write down that one, that one, and that one because they're actually exactly the same. And you okay, so there's my final solution with the duplicate not put in more than not put in twice. And that can really help a marker know exactly what they're looking for.